So in this tutorial, we're going to create what we call the Harris shutter effect using these three images in Photoshop. So let's get into it. Now we'll go through this Harris shutter effect tutorial briefly here in Photoshop, but if you want a slightly more uh, in-depth version of this tutorial, then you need to check out iPhotography Light Tricks course. It's an amazing course covering all different aspects of creative light in photography and some brilliant Photoshop tutorials just like this one. So what we're going to do to begin with is start off with our three images. Now really what you're looking to try and use is three images that are very similar. So in this instance we've got our subject here who's on the phone, very shot in a very very similar position and um, just slight tweaks to her body and kind of her gestures etc. So that's the kind of look that we're, uh, we're going for to begin with, three images that are very similar with, with slight tweaks in position. So in terms of our starting piece, um, you need to choose an image that we're going to use as our base and then the other image is going to be laid over top. So I think we'll start off with this, this image here. Now one thing we need to get rid of on all our images is the background. Now depending on how complicated and how detailed your backgrounds are, this may take a little bit longer than how I'm going to show it here. But effectively I'm going to use the magic wand tool to begin with. I'm firstly going to uh, just unlock our background, I'll do that on all our images but I'll do it on this one to begin with. Um, it's just so then we can get rid of that background quite easily when we're deleting it. So with our magic wand tool, I'm gonna to make a selection. Um, now this selection may not be perfectly accurate depending upon the level of tolerance and the area that I'm clicking on as well as the image itself. So I'm gonna click on it, it may not work. I may just have to adjust the tolerance, lower it down a little bit so it's not selecting as many areas. And then I can add areas to it by holding down the shift key and just selecting more areas. So ultimately what we're trying to do is, is kind of get rid of the background, make as, as fine a selection as possible. This may take a little while. You do have to be kind of quite careful what you are selecting and what you're not selecting. But what you can do from here still, if you just don't want to make a, a, a universal deletion of everything that's selected, because as we can see down here uh, in our pants, things like that have been selected. We don't want to get rid of that because that's part of the body. So what we can do is then actually switch to the eraser tool. And now that we've got a selection, we can be a little bit more careful with what we actually delete. So you can just use the eraser tool and it won't go over areas that aren't being selected. So you can be fairly confident that you're not gonna delete anything that you, uh, you actually need still, but still be careful when you are coming down to detail places that you may accidentally delete. Because if you're just using the eraser brush like this, um, you do have to go back through the history steps to undo it. We're not using any layer masks, though you can use that in this instance as well. So it's done a fairly decent job of kind of picking out the outline of our subject here. I'm just being a little bit careful around the edges. So I don't want to remove any of her outfit. But making the best selection possible, whether that's using the magic wand tool. You can even use other tools in Photoshop, such as like the quick selection tool. Um, that can work quite well. It really is just a preference. So ultimately, this is just kind of part of getting our images ready before we actually kind of crack on with the uh, main body of this tutorial. So it's always important to zoom in that little bit closer when you're coming up to fine edges, just to make sure that you don't end up accidentally deleting things that you're going to need. And then remember to go in a little bit closer and catch some of the inside aspects. So there we go. We've got a pretty decent selection there. There's a little bit of a tag down in the bottom corner here, um, but that's what we're looking for. So we're basically looking for a cutout of our subject. So I'm going to jump on and do the exact same thing with our two other images here. Um, and then we'll actually get on to creating this Harris shutter effect. So now we've got all three images prepped and ready. They've got all the background cut out of them. Now what we need to do is lay them on top of each other. So I think we said we'll start with this image in the middle as our base layer. So now we're literally just going to go to our other shots and we'll drag them over. And I'll do the exact same with the other one. So we've got all three there. Now I can get rid of our 
to end images and we'll just work on this one canvas. So what we need to do is try and get the positions right. So we're looking for a position where there's a bit of an overlay and an overlap but not so much that we are losing faces. We want to be able to kind of keep a little bit of detail in some of the bodies. I see a little bit of areas down on her leg where I've not caught the cut out that perfectly. So I'm just going to use that magic wand tool again, just get my eraser and then just refine it from there. Now, given what, how the Harris effect, how it, now, given how the Harris shutter effect looks, you don't have to be too precise and too finite necessarily um, with all the kind of cutting out. It's good to kind of get a decent base, but if there are very, very small areas where you're going into almost a pixel level, don't worry so much about that because you're probably not going to see it uh, in the final version. So my last one here, the model is a little bit shorter. So, and she kind of partly covers the face a little bit of one, one of the other subjects. So. I'm actually just going to reduce the size for ever so slightly and just move her to one side. So we still get that kind of really nice collage effect ultimately. That's what that's what we're looking for. I'm going to move our back layer backwards a little bit. And again, my OCD has just caught another little area of that background. So there's a tiny bit down there that you can see, but again, you don't have to overly worry about little things like that. Right, anyway, let's get on to creating this effect. So now we've got our background. Sorry, now we've got our three layers on our canvas. We do need to have a background. So we can add a new layer from the layers panel and then just drop it to the very bottom. Because none of these layers are locked, we can move the order of them really, really easily. Now to create a background, um, it's very, very simple. We can just keep with a very simple white background. And if we effectively just change our swatch and it gives us that color picker, just choose a white background. Now you can either paint it in with a paintbrush or you can just go to edit, fill, Using the foreground color, press OK. So we've got a white background there. So we know it's nice and clean. OK, let's now have a look at each individual layer and we'll start to create this Harris effect. So let's uh, hide the top two layers to begin with so we can do this one by one and you can see it a bit more clearly. We double click on the layer to bring up our layer styles. And in this initial uh, general blending option, we've got three options here under channels of red, green, and blue. Now what we're gonna do with each of those is we're going to turn them on, on each of the layers, but only one channel per layer. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, let me show you. So for this layer, let's just keep the red channel and we're gonna lose the green and we're gonna lose the blue. So. If this helps to track, let's might as well actually call the layers based upon the channels that we're using. So we've chosen red on that one. We'll open this layer and then this layer style. We'll turn off the red and the green. Hopefully you can start to see the effect coming into fruition. And we'll open this top layer, double click again. So we've had red selected and green deselected. So we'll call this blue. And there we go. It's as simple as that. We're isolating individual color channels in each of our layers here to create this overlapped double multiple exposure type of effect. It's really where we've kind of separated each of the color channels out to make this more psychedelic type of Harris shutter effect as it's sometimes called. It's as simple as that. But as I say, if you wanted a more in-depth tutorial, check out iPhotography Light Tricks. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, keep looking out for iPhotography for more.